Hi, so I'm going to try to review the Libre 14. It's a, a Linux laptop I purchased recently. I know a lot of Linux specific channels. Uh, they tend to overlook some flaws in these laptops because it's a Linux, it's a small company, it's a Linux computer, they're excited. I'm going to try to not do that uh, and be more of an honest review. Um, uh, you know, after about a week of use, um, just kind of what I've noticed. Uh, yeah, so the first thing when you get this laptop, you notice is that it actually is pr it feels pretty thin, like the metal. Um, I, I've been using uh, MacBooks and Dell Inspirons and things like that, which are incredible, incredible build qualities. Um, but you do start with this. I mean, it's a smaller company. You notice those things. There are some small. You can see there's a, a panel gap kind of along here. You know, uh, it's a little bit thinner metal. You kind of get that. That's just how it is. Uh, if you look at the side, this is a, this is not a USB Type C. This is a lock. Do micro USB, normal USB, a micro SD card, uh, USB C Type port. Um, here we have an aux, yeah, aux, power, USB Type-C, normal USB, and a pop-up Ethernet, which is kind of cool. Um, and obviously, there is no logo on the front, which I think is pretty cool. I like that feature. Um, actually, watch the inside. First, uh, this hinge is kind of a disappointingly cheap plastic feel. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of that. And it's concerning a lot of uh, Librem laptops. Uh, they had hinge issues, so after just a few years, uh, these hinges would wear out, basically. They were misaligned. Uh, this is supposed to be new, a uh, new revised one. Um, you know, let's, let's hope it works out better. But it doesn't feel, it's not confidence-inspiring. And when you open it, uh, it kind of has a little bit of slack in it, uh, in kind of a gross-feeling way, which is, you know, it, it is what it is. Um, and also, of course, they move the kill switches from the side of the laptop. To the top of the laptop, I thought that was pretty nice. You also have a large trackpad. It feels it's not glass. It feels uh, slightly more texturized, and it's a really bad acceleration problem. So once you start to get to the end of once you try, once you're trying to click on something, it'll often keep accelerating past where you moved. It's not great. Uh, it's fine. You know, I'm sure half the people will install i3 anyways on this, but you know, uh, that, that's just how it is. Um, and the, and nicely, so the uh, Wi-Fi card as well is uh, replaceable, so they use kind of a fourth generation Wi-Fi card in this, uh, and there's no Bluetooth, uh, I mean, you can install the drivers, but it's not great, um, you can replace that though, that's pretty cool. Alright, you of course have the screen, I have a low, I turn off the lamp, I have the lower, but lowest brightness, uh, right, but it goes from here to about here, I don't know how full it is. But it, it's a 1080, 1080p screen, it's 14, it's 14 inch screen as well. Uh, I, I think it looks great, I, I have no problems with that. I mean, you can't see pixels. Uh, you have a 1080p 15 inch screen as well, and you can't see pixels on it either. And I, I think that's fine. Um, one thing I don't think is fine at all is the speakers, the two small speakers right up here, and they're incredibly tinny. It's a little funny, because part of the reason, I mean, my, my MacBook was just dead. But one of the things that was wrong about it was, uh, the speakers are blown out, so you couldn't hear any bass. And you also can't hear bass on these. This is about, <laughs> it's similar to blown out speakers in my MacBook. Uh, so that's not great. Um, also, what's kind of disappointing, in here maybe, this will be better. But what's disappointing is, uh, this is the shift key, right? It's it's pretty small. I mean, it's right next to the up, up arrow key. And that you get increasingly used to it. However, it's, uh, it's, it's a bad location and you, you end up going up instead of shifting, you go up and then you start typing in the wrong line and it's, it's a huge pain. Um, otherwise inside it has a 10th gen Intel i7 six core processor. Uh, the laptop costs about, what does it cost? Uh, for, for my build, it's 1857. So that's uh, 16 gigs of RAM and 500 gigabyte uh, SSD. Um, right, and you're probably thinking that's a lot of money, right? And that is. But uh, yeah, no, 1857 for the spec is a lot of money. Um, and there's a reason for that. It's because they rewrite a lot of the software. They do their own things to make it more secure. Um, but uh, that means like uh, HP Envy, which also has a hardware kill switch for the uh, microphone and uh, camera. Uh, similarly, spike a spec HP Envy with a new, with a uh, Intel i7 11th gen processor, uh, same amount of RAM and uh, hard drive space. Uh, it costs about $700, $700 less, right? It's uh, $1,100. Uh, you know, that's a tremendous amount of money. 
Um, and so, I mean, you should consider that. There are issues with uh, kind of purism supply chain as well, right? So this laptop, uh, when they made it, though, there's a third party supplier of the boards who, uh, presumably for production reasons, uh, they they just made, they modified the board. And Fusum didn't notice this, this only got caught by customers. Um, and, you know, for a security focused laptop, that's not a good look. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of that. You know, I mean, I'm, I'm sure this is fine, but what you do see, like, it was just, I think two years ago, Lenovo got in trouble because they were inserting these spy chips into uh, server, server grade hardware, basically, for Apple and some other companies. And it was, it was a big scandal. You know, and they've done things like this. And do I think they are uh, putting, you know, kind of quote unquote spy chips in this laptop to somehow, you know, read data or make it easier for them to access if they wanted to? Probably not. But this is a, this is the kind of laptop that, you know, people would try to tamper with if they were ever going to tamper with a laptop. Uh, so you, you think that, that should be considered. Uh, in my case, actually, uh, if you open the laptop up, which I have done, uh, they just put a piece of tape over, <laughs> over the modified piece of board, which, which um, I think is symbolic of how Purism tackles a lot of things. So there's also the issue of uh, customer support. So Purism, known for kind of, they kind of have a reputation of being a disorganized company. Um, uh, you know, so what you'll see in the forums or in uh, Reddit threads, people, like maybe if they try to get a refund for something, uh, Purism will just never give out the refund, right? They'll keep telling them they're gonna do it and they never do, and they have to charge it back. Uh, in my case, when I ordered this laptop, uh, it was delayed about eight months from November, uh, December to like July. Uh, you know, I mean, a long time. And they never sent me an email with that, right? They just, you just didn't get your laptop and you had to go figure out why you didn't get a laptop. So that's kind of a pain. Um, they do respond quickly in my experience, uh, but they're not super helpful. So like in my case, uh, the C key, right? And the H key, um, I don't know if you guys can see that, are both really mushy and they don't really work, right? So I, I pushed each key about eight times and you can see it, it printed out once, um, which really makes it, I mean, first off, it makes it difficult to review this laptop because you can't really use it. I can't program on this, um, but that's a huge pain, right? Uh, this is an issue. I messaged Purism about this. They told me to press the key heard, see if I can like, clean something up or, I don't know, uh, you know, knock something out and get it working. Uh, obviously that didn't work. Um, and they've just stopped responding, right? See, so I've emailed them a few times um, and you can't really, yeah, you know, I've emailed them a few times and they just stopped responding. And since it's been almost a year, you know, this might just, I might just take this as a loss. You know, I, I, I think chargebacks only work six months or a year out. Um, that's a huge pain. The, the keyboard, actually, I, I, I forgot to talk about that. The keyboard is fine. It actually is a lot of key travel. So, you know, and that, that feels like a little bit more key travel than my 2013 MacBook Pro. It's, it's, it's a nice keyboard, but it, it has quality issues. Obviously, these two keys don't work for me. Um, but otherwise, uh, some of the keys do have different key feels to them. Uh, maybe I somehow just got a really bad board, uh, but yeah, that's kind of concerning. So to recap, I don't think you shouldn't buy this laptop, but it satisfies an important niche market of Linux privacy focused laptops, you know, uh, Edward Snowden owns one for a reason. That said, you probably aren't Edward Snowden and you probably shouldn't buy this laptop. Uh, you think you'd be a lot happier with like an old ThinkPad, like if you're privacy conscious, maybe, you know, into a uh, ThinkPad from before Intel management engine was introduced, um, you know, or something of that sort. But, uh, you know, this one, it, it, it it's faster. It, in, it's prettier in many ways it's better uh but it's also you know it's but in other ways it, it doesn't work very well there's there's a lot of build quality issues um it's not an excellent laptop honestly looking at it from this angle which is something i haven't done before the, the intersection between the plastic front plate and the screen is warped it's a little bit wavy you know and that's something that's going to become more of an issue with time um so we're going to see and also, I guess I should mention uh, both the operating systems. So it uses uh, Pure OS, which is fine. It's, just, it's Debian. And that's, I mean, you can, if, if you want to see what that's like, uh, you should open, you should start a VM, uh, put on a flash drive, and try it on your computer. And if you don't think you're technically capable of doing that, then you probably shouldn't get this laptop. Right. So other uh, things. So when I first got this, so this was the, it wouldn't charge. 
So uh, something had gotten messed up and I had to install like the proper drivers, drivers just to charge it, right? Which is something you don't think of as being, as, as something you'd want to, uh, someone who's not tech, uh, very technically literate would want to do, right? Um, this webcam, uh, I assume it's a drive issue. I haven't really looked into it a ton because I, I don't use the webcam for anything, but it, it doesn't work regardless of how you flip the um, switch. Um, right key press, let's see. Well, that, that works fine. Right key press just registers uh, as a left key press. And the only way to do any, the only way to get, get it to work properly is you have to uh, double tap light, you know, lightly. So not, not the proper press, but just the um, you know, light tap. But otherwise, yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, it, it's a pain. Um, it's not totally evident why uh, some of this stuff doesn't work, but um, you know, it, but it, you know, it, it has its purpose. Um, so again, to recap, uh, you can buy this. I probably wouldn't.